up YouTube and welcome to episode 7 of Vlogmas, the 12 days of Vlogmas really. In today's vlog, I'm going to show you guys two Christmas treat recipes. They're not healthy at all, like not 0%. 0% healthy, um, but that's fine because unhealthy foods taste amazing. Um, I'm gonna be showing you two recipes though. One is like super duper easy. It's a no-bake recipe. It's only like five ingredients maybe, and it's something that you could probably whip up like really super quick. Other recipe is going to be a little bit more complex, but I have already baked one time this holiday season. Like I baked some sugar cookies, so I've like gotten my feet wet a little bit with like baking because I don't think I've ever baked cookies from scratch in the last like five years. So, yay. Um, but yes, keep on watching for the two recipes that I'm going to share and I hope that you enjoy this video. All right, so the first recipe that I'm gonna be making is a maple walnut sugar cookie, like a cutout kind that I can decorate with icing. Um, I've been watching a lot of the holiday baking championship cooking whatever shows on the Food Network. So my desire to bake things has been out of control this holiday season. And so like a few weeks ago, Matt and I were like, we're gonna bake, like we're gonna finally bake something and it went horribly <laughs> um, the food turned out okay but I was in a terrible mood the whole time because I just don't have a lot of patience for like reading instructions and when it comes to baking you have to follow them to a T or it's not gonna turn out so it did not go well I actually had planned on filming that and like five seconds into it I was like yeah I'm not filming this I'm really irritated I'm just gonna try and get through this but you know I have grown as a person since then you know a solid three weeks ago and I feel like I'm gonna have a little bit easier of a time doing this recipe and filming it or at least I'm gonna try so we're gonna see what happens I got the recipe on Pinterest it's right it's right here I will put the link down below to this recipe and the link to the recipe that I do after this one, which I already filmed. I did not do like any like talking during it. Um, so I will have that at the end, but for now we're gonna film me doing this maple, walnut, whatever, whatever recipe. And Matt is gonna eventually help, right? Always. <laughs> yeah, so let's do this. Also, why does this keep ending up in the background? It's not a sponsor, it's just freaking Clorox because I'm crazy and I constantly Clorox everything in my life. If I could Clorox my body, I would Clorox my body. I hate germs. <laughs> One thing I'll say that when I made cookies last time, I was really upset that I did not have a mixer, especially like one of those upright standing electric mixers because it's really hard to mix together like flour and eggs and sugar and everything with just like manpower and a fork and a bowl. 10 out of 10 do not recommend. So. I found this for $20 at Walmart. I have no idea if this is gonna be like way worse to use than an upright mixer, but thankfully I've never used an upright like KitchenAid stand mixer, so I don't even know what I'm gonna be missing out on. All I'm gonna know is that I'm not mixing a batch of cookies with my arm in a fork. I feel like we're already heading in the right direction. All right, so for this recipe, you will need one cup of butter, one and a half cups of powdered sugar, one egg, two teaspoons of maple extract, one teaspoon vanilla extract, two and third cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, and half a cup of finely chopped walnuts. All right, the first step is to beat butter. That sounds disgusting. Beat butter and sugar. Here's powdered sugar and I'm putting in one cup of butter. Raise this a bit so you can see the top of my head, very important. Okay, um, I think we just turn it on. I'm scared. How do we do this? Oh. Right, I had to call up for backup. Oh my God, you were so tall. You need to not be so tall. This is the, this is the most my camera can go in height, so you're just gonna have to do it like this. All right, so beat the butter and sugar. Press it just like up once, yeah. Now, just like, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna crack an egg while you're beating. Hey, extra. Basically just lots of things. Some vanilla. I know I'm not even doing the hand mixing that much. He's mostly doing it, but it's stressing me out way less to do this with a hand mixer than we literally like had like a fork and we were just beating it until it was dough. I, 10 out of 10, do not recommend. All right, so we need two and three fourths cup of flour. One, two, and three fourths, we'll just be a little bit more. These measurements are not exact. I'm just gonna admit that right now. Very much estimated. That looks like three fourths, right? <laughs> If it needs more, then we'll put more. I don't know how we would know it would need more, but 
but when we're eating it. While we're eating it. This is how they do it on TV. They add like a little bit at a time, so that's what I'm doing. Because I'm a professional. Am I doing this right? Two teaspoons baking soda. One teaspoon of salt, so like, this, this seems like a teaspoon. Side note, I just used my food presser to like finely crush walnuts, because that's what this recipe calls for, is like finely crushed walnuts. And let the record show that my super crappy, wanted at Dave and Buster's food processor actually finely chopped my walnuts. Pretty much failed at every other food experiment I've ever tried with it, but I give it 10 points. It can handle walnuts! 10 points for Gryffindor. He doesn't even like Harry Potter. Don't listen to him. <laughs> they're the same color as the dough. I'm not gonna be able to tell if they're like stirred in or if there's like a clump of walnuts somewhere. Is the dough good? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try. Are we done with the mixer? Um, yes. Right, now I can bring this down to just my size because he's not gonna be helping as much. Breaking things? You just flung dough all over the floor. Sorry. I'm divorcing you. He doesn't like that joke. Funny joke. <laughs> all right, this dough feels like suspiciously moist. I feel like it should be doughier. I feel like it should be like less wet, but we're gonna roll with it. I'm gonna flour my counter, because these are like cutout cookies. That you like roll out and you do shapes with. It's not a good flouring situation. I just like dumped a bunch of flour on the counter. It's fine. Don't judge my flouring techniques. You couldn't do any better. If it needs more flour, we can still add more flour. That's right, it's better be that way than add more moisture. You got your rolling pin. I do, last time we also did not have a rolling pin when we made like sugar cookies. We had to use an olive oil bottle and it did not work well, but you know, I am nothing if not, what's the word? Resourceful. Improvisive. Resourceful. Improvisive is that word. It feels a little bit more doughy now that I'm like spooning it all. Rolling pin, rolling pin. We have our big ball of dough. Yes. Ooh. It doesn't say we have to chill it or anything, so I hope that we don't have to chill this. The recipe didn't say so. This definitely feels so soft. I wonder if it's because it has like powdered sugar in it as opposed to granulated sugar, but the recipe calls for powdered sugar, so... What am I supposed to do? I just follow the rules. Always, always following the cooking rules. Pro tip, flour your um, rolling pin too. The recipe did not tell me, but the other recipe said to flour the rolling pin and it makes your life easier. And just add some flour there. I mean, it looks like dough. It looks so good. I have no idea how many cookies this is going to make. We might be stuck with like 30 cookies in our house. Alright. Little guy. I forget what we did last time. I feel like these were really hard to move without ruining the shape of them, but I'm just going to see what happens. I don't think this is a technical term. I did just use a knife right on my counter. I know, I know. Oh, this is way easier than the other dough. <laughs> All right, so they look kind of like deformed because um, I don't know if anybody else like knows the answer to this. The dough is so wet and like sensitive that like when I try to pick it up either with a spatula or with my hands, like the dough just loses its shape. Is it, if I'm, does anybody know if it's because my dough is too dry or too wet or if um, there's another way to do this that's easier? Because I'm just cutting out the shapes and then lifting the excess dough around it up and then trying to just like scoop it off the table and onto my baking tray. I don't, I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not, but I'm trying. All right, after her, a lot of tedious work, I have two trays of cutout cookies that are uneven in width. 
So I know that they're not going to cook evenly, but look how cute they are. And they're gonna taste good because the dough tastes good. So I'm excited, even if some of them are like super thin and some are a little thicker, but we're gonna roll with it. Now these are going into the oven at 400 degrees for seven to nine minutes, and they'll be cooked. While those are cooking, I'm going to make a batch of royal icing, which is basically like powdered sugar, milk, and maybe some vanilla extract, but we're gonna use maple extract. All right, the recipe for this icing calls for two cups of powdered sugar, two tablespoons of water. Oh, this doesn't even need milk. I'm gonna probably use milk anyway. One tablespoon of corn syrup. I don't have that, so I'm not gonna use it. One teaspoon maple extract, mixed together until smooth. I just did this a few weeks ago. I feel like I've got this. Actually, we're just gonna dump all of this powdered sugar in here because I need a lot of ice skin. So here we go. It's probably around two cups, maybe a little bit more. And a tiny bit of milk. Is that too much? I don't know, I'll find out. Oh, don't forget the maple extract. Sorry of me not measuring things. It's cool. Definitely needs more milk. Is that too much milk? <laughs> Whoops. Oh yeah, the cookies are done and I didn't burn them and they look Good. And currently I'm working on coloring my royal icing. I have green done, I have brown done, which if you're wondering how to make brown, you just keep putting colors in there until it gets brown. I think there's literally every color in here. I don't know. Here we go with red. Is this satisfying to anybody? This is so satisfying to me. Oh, I'm probably gonna add more red to make it like super duper red. Icing is my favorite part of this whole process. It's like coloring for adults adult bakers, adult bakers who don't have access to coloring books or something, I don't know. I love it, I'm so excited. I spoke too soon about not burning any cookies. I burned a few. I'm so sorry, guys. They looked good on the top and then on the bottom, they were very burned. These were the ones on the edges of the bottom rack, so I feel like that had something to do with it. Boo! If anybody knows how to combat this in the future also, that would be super good to know. This is the bottom of them, by the way, on the top. They look fine, but they taste like doo-doo because they're the bottom. So I have all my dyed icings. I have little piping bags I'm gonna pour them into and that's how I'm gonna be doing the decorating. I also have white icing from a tube because white icing is hard to get like with the vanilla extract and stuff it just turns light brown. So here we have super white icing and we're just waiting for the cookies to cool. They're in the freezer. This is a photo that Matt drew of me one time when I was at Old Navy in the fitting room and he was- In under five minutes. In under five minutes. Let us also know that this masterpiece was done in under five minutes. And there's me and there's our two cats. Um, the fat one is Mia for obvious reasons. You chunk, chunk master. I have my piping bags filled with royal icing and I have my white icing. And I have my first cold cookies out ready to go. And do I have frosting on my face already? I don't think so. I think we're good. I keep over doing the edges and then it drains like that. Ugh. You see it's like flooding. I'm gonna keep trying. I wonder if these are just like not cool enough. That could definitely be it. Cause last time the icing did not move around like this. I think I'm gonna let them cool a little bit longer. I've been icing these cookies for 400 years, literally. Um, and I'm not done, but I'm giving up because I'm so tired of this. I've been doing this for over an hour. But they turned out pretty cute. I was like pretty motivated for these ones here, like to like make them precise and cute. And then I've just gotten sloppier and sloppier as time has gone on and I'm just, I'm over it. I don't know if these guys are gonna end up getting iced or if I'm just gonna slosh some icing on them just to have flavor. The next footage you're gonna see is gonna be the easy recipe that I made. The one that's super easy, doesn't take long to make. So I'm gonna put that footage here and I hope you enjoy it.
All right, you guys, that's gonna wrap up this vlog. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.